Hi, Mike's Carburetor Parts. Doing this video about uh, what causes flooding in a carburetor. And I'm using this particular carburetor. This happens to be a Carter One Barrel YF. Just using this as an example. Uh, the, the information I'm going to give you is, is generally generic. And sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that gets in the picture right. Um, so, what does it mean when a carburetor is flooding? Uh, flooding is when there is so much gas getting to the carburetor that it's flowing over the top, running out of the throttle shaft. Uh, so if you see gas coming out from right here, or here, that means it's flooding. Or perhaps a vent tube. So here's a vent tube here going to the float bowl and if gas is coming out here you're getting way too much gas. Okay. So whatever is the least resistance that is where the gas will go. So for example if it's if it's leaking too much fuel into the bore it's going to hit the throttle plate here and run out of the uh, throttle shaft. Okay. Uh, this is very dangerous because so many engine and cars uh, burn up because of a gas leak or flooding. All the gas has to do is touch a spark and off it goes. Which reminds me, anytime you're working on your engine, be sure to have a fire extinguisher close by. And I have a story about that. A customer spent years uh, restoring his GTO and the first time he took it out for a trial spin, the carburetor flooded over and caught fire. Yep, yeah, GTO 442. Well, guess what? He didn't have a fire extinguisher or anything else to put the fire out. So basically, he had to stand there and uh, watch his car burn. Made me sick just hearing him about it. When I was talking to this customer on the phone, he was just getting done with his second restoration and was calling me for a carburetor kit. The carburetor was the last thing he had to finish the car. So. back to flooding. Now that made you ill. There are several things that can cause flooding and I'll address each and uh, it's not of it in any order of importance. There's lots of things that can cause flooding. Uh, first thing most people want to do when their carb is flooding is change the float setting. And unless the float is hugely off, uh, that's not the problem at least far as the setting goes. Uh, set your float to specs and leave it there. Fudging the float setting is doing nothing but covering up what the real problem is. Now the float could be causing the flooding. It might have a hole or a cracking, crack in it allowing uh, it to fill up with gas. That makes it too heavy and will keep the needle open. So let me take the top off this so you can see the float. Okay, so here's a float in this particular carburetor. Okay, now I can see it's probably set right. It's just about level in this particular carburetor, but that's neither here nor there. But um, these things can, where the brass, or excuse me, where they're soldered, they can uh, split and leak. Sometimes with heat and cold, they, they flex, they move around. And uh, so in the brass float, the first thing you want to do is heat up some water just prior to boiling and immerse the float in there. And if there's, what happens is inside the, the uh, float, uh, the heat causes the air to expand. And if there's a hole in it or a crack, you're going to see bubbles coming out of it right away. So that's how you test the brass float. 
Now the nitrophil float uh, is solid, and that's that black, it's not exactly plastic, but they're solid. And the only way to test them is to weigh them with the gram scale. And every float has a different weight. I can't tell you what it is right offhand. Most of our floats we have that posted so you can test them. Um, the other thing you want to do is uh, move your float up and down to fill any catches because a float pin here could be worn. You want to make sure the float is centered because if it rubs on the side of the float bowl here it's going to uh, cause it to flood. Okay, Most common cause of flooding is dirt in the needle and seat. This is the needle, that's the seat. You get a little bit of dirt in there from the gas tank or whatever. Uh, you're, it's going to keep the needle open and cause flooding. So what happens often is you clean your carburetor, get it all rebuilt, put it back on the car, and then you start the engine, and dirt from a dirty gas tank or in the fuel line rushes up and into the carburetor. So if your gas tank has been in use for many years, consider taking it off and giving it a good cleaning. Most rebuilds that are returned are defective, as defective, are found to have uh, dirt in the bottom of the flow bowl. Uh, now, if you need to clean your gas tank out, I've used Eastwood Company. Uh, they have a very good tank cleaner and sealer. It's kind of an involved process, but uh, anybody can do it. They had good instructions. I didn't have any problem and good results. Even with a fuel filter, you can get dirt in a carburetor. Keep in mind that filters can't be so restrictive, restrictive that they cut off the gas supply. Make sure all the old gasket has been removed from under the seat. I think about every needle and seat has a gasket below the, the seat. Okay, there's your gasket. And this has happened to me, that's why I mention it. Um, if you didn't get all the old gasket cleaned out of here, or even half of it's there, it's going to cause it to leak around around the uh, seat. So you want to check it and make sure you got all the gasket cleaned up. Uh, the fuel pumps another possibility. If you have an electric pump, be sure to have a regulator uh, installed between the pump and the carburetor and set it to four or five four to five pounds uh, as per your motors manual. Bear with me a second, I got my notes here. <laughs> All right, new fuel pumps are especially suspect. Um, it's not unusual to have them pumping at 20 pounds of pressure. Uh, most of them, probably all of them, come from China and uh, they don't seem to do very well with specifications sometimes. So a new pump is, is suspect. So test your fuel pump, make sure it's not putting out too much pressure. The other thing I want to mention is uh, your needle can be, or the Viton tip on it, can be scored or damaged when you're adjusting the float. So if you're adjusting the float here and you put, put pressure on that needle, it, uh, get that back in there, it could have caused a problem with the needle. Okay. So, be careful when you adjust in the float. You don't put pressure on it. Get in there. Yeah, get in there. Works. Okay, so that's one possibility. So what you can do with the float on is uh, you can, uh, with the, using your mouth if you want, blow in here. Uh, and remember, it, it doesn't take but about five pounds to raise that needle up. So blow through there, make sure you're getting, uh, it, it doesn't, it's holding. That's the, that's the best thing you can do. Okay? So if, you're, and if your vehicle's been sitting around for, let's say, three or more months, it kind of depends on the gas, how long it takes. The gas might have turned and coated the inside of the carburetor. 
you, you will usually smell varnish when this happens. It's pretty distinctive. I've had it happen to me more than once. Uh, we recommend you using uh, ethanol defense. This right here. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good product. There's a lot of products out there that uh, claim to be uh, an ethanol defender, but uh, this one actually works. Uh, it uh, treats 160 gallons of gas. Uh, you put like one or two ounces of it in in each tank full, and it, what it does is just keeps the ethanol from harming the rubber parts in your carburetor. Uh, it helps keep the, the gas from turning. Uh, into varnish, uh, although it will happen anyway, but give it enough time. So, there you go. Uh, give that a try. We do have this, uh, lots of it in stock. We sell a lot of it. So there are some ideas for you uh, as far as the carburetor flooding. I hope that helps. Uh, for the most part, those are the things that are going to cause it. So give those, uh, check those out. Uh, if you have some other kind of problem, be sure to email us and uh, uh, fill out a, a CRM form on at the bottom of our website. Uh, I think there's a contact link there. And we'll be happy to answer your question. Okay, so you can get uh, your carburetor parts from mikescarb.com. That's M-I-K-E-S-C-A-R-B.com. Okay. Thank you. I do appreciate you uh, watching this.